It's the NCAA Women's Championship presented on ESPN by Orbitz. At 7 Eastern, number four seeded Rutgers faces number three seed LSU. Then at 9 o'clock Eastern, number one seed North Carolina takes on the number one seeded Lady Balls of Tennessee. Coverage begins at 6.30 Eastern with the NCAA Women's Championship Special. It's about 80 degrees in Atlanta today. It's about to heat up right now. The Vegas.com Slam Dunk Championship from Atlanta, from Georgia State Arena. Brad Nessler, Jimmy Dyke, Steve Lavin, and Aaron Andrews along with you. Before we look at the dunkers tonight, let's take a look back at some of the high flyers and the dunks of the year. Wouldn't it be fun to do it just once, huh? The Vegas.com Slam Dunk Championship, and here's our starting lineup. Marlon Pompey out of Texas A&M, Adrian Hill of Rutgers. Royce Perrin, the smallest guy in the group out of Chicago State, Long Beach State's Lewis Darby. Russell Carter of Notre Dame, David Patton of Weaver State, Mario West in his hometown here in Atlanta from Georgia Tech, and Brent Petway, who is a Georgia native as well, from Michigan. Here's the rules. Eight competitors, judging based on a 10-point scale, maximum score of 60 per dunk with the six judges. No penalty for missed dunks, but you have to make one in 30 seconds. First round, two dunks, scores are average, and then the top four players will advance. Semi-final and final, one dunk. Half the field eliminated in each round. Let's meet our judges. Here's a guy that 11 years ago won the NBA slam dunk title. Former Atlanta Hawk, Spud Webb, smallest guy to ever win it. Here's a guy that won it two years ago. Really coming on strong right now for the Atlanta Hawks, Josh Smith. Here's a guy that was a pain in the Falcons, but for so many years they signed him. The newest Atlanta Falcon, Joe Horn, a wide receiver. Takia Spikes, great linebacker for the Philadelphia Eagles, was Mr. Football as a high school senior in Georgia. And just down the road at Auburn, Ronnie Brown was a star in the Georgia Class 2A Player of the Year, now with the Miami Dolphins. And that is our Alltel fan judge, Matt Giannakis, who gets to join the group over there as judge number six. Matt doesn't quite fill up the screen like the rest of them. Not quite, not quite. <laughs> Here's our first contestant, 6'8", Marlon Pape from the Aggies of Texas A&M. Toronto is where he grew up, but he's actually born in Trinidad. So he's a guy that's seen it all, including College Station. I'm sure Trinidad and Toronto and College Station have a lot in common. <laughs> Billy Gillespie said he was his best defender all year, and that, that's saying something from an A&M squad that absolutely chewed you up defensively. Pape between the legs and up and through. A little conservative there. Is this a spattering of booze out there? Tough crowd. Can any of this people in this crowd do that? <laughs> well, here's another look. We want to play it safe here. The big thing is to not miss the dunk. He actually got it down by his knee, faked like he was going to go between his legs. And we await that first dunk score while Adrian Hill from Rutgers steps up to the plate. Marlon Pompey, what do you get with the first one from the judges? 35. And he knows already that that's not going to be good enough. Not in this competition. Here's Adrian Hill, 6'8". Vertical leap of 41 and a half. Out of Canton, Ohio, home of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Told us yesterday he dunked for the first time as a seventh grader. Here he comes with a little help. You get too fancy now in this first round, and you mess around and don't make one, you're out. And he did miss it, and he's got to get one in in 30 seconds. Cameron Taylor from Wisconsin's trying to help him with a bounce pass, but the assists aren't too good. He's got his last chance right here, and he hammered it home. 
Well, he got it when he had to have it. You know, it doesn't count if you miss, but sometimes, psychologically, I think in the mind of the judges, it might have some effect. Lavi comes back with a strong finish with a shot clock winding down, huh? Well, clearly, the muscles on display with the flush. So let's see what the judges thought. He's still waiting on a score as we wait with him. And he got a 48. Still pretty explosive, Brad, for a guy that's undergone three left knee surgeries over his college career. Here's a guy that's dancing to the beat. He's Jimmy's choice. He's the smallest guy in the competition. He says they list me at 5'10 in the programs back at Chicago State. I'm probably not that tall. And Aaron is with a guy that's even smaller, Spud Webb. You were the shortest player in NBA history to ever win a slam dunk contest. So our guy, Royce Perrin, getting ready to go. Shortest guy here tonight. What kind of advice would you give him, Spud? Well, I, I, I've seen him dunking in warm-ups. He gets up pretty amazing. I, he can do any dunk. I've seen him in warm-ups. He can do any dunk. So hopefully uh, he pulled one off. Uh, he don't look confident, but uh, hopefully he pick it up. He was very excited to hear that you were judging the contest tonight. Any favoritism your way? Because oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely favoritism. <laughs> if he do a good one, I'm going to give him a good score. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll send it back over to Brad. Thank you. Well, uh, Spud got some good scores back in 86 at 5-7 in the slam dunk competition. The elevator two-handed double pump dunk. And he had the one-hander when he went off the backboard. Remember that one? Boom. That's got a lot of pictures. And then the 360 helicopter one-hander, and he beat Dominique Wilkins, his teammate, with 150-point scores in the final round. Spud Webb still around, one of the great guys in college and pro basketball history. So here's a guy that's looked up to him or down to Spud, and as the case might be, and also said Tiny Archibald was one of his idols. Here's the smallest guy in the competition. Going to put it in the air and go get it. And he hammered it home. He has been exciting this crowd for the last two hours with moves like that more than around the rim, I can tell you. He and Brent Petway have been dancing since last night. I like the fact he was sandbagging yesterday when we talked with him, talking about this was just a great opportunity to hang out with some of the celebrities. Right. A little Lou Holtz action uh -huh. here. Take a look at this. He's got some tricks. He sends us his own, his own homemade video by himself because his coach resigned. And now he's right here on the big stage, breaking it down, huh, Royce Perrin? The kindred spirits with Spud Webb. <laughs> And let's check in with Aaron. Well, from one dancer to another, great routine at the end. I'd give you a 10, but you've been dancing all night, so how did you have any energy to get up in the air like that? See, the trick was to, to maintain and be able to be loose, and that's all the things that everybody needs to be worried about, just being loose. And when everybody be loose, we got a lot of high-flying athletes out here, so if people get loose, we're going to have a real show tonight. This guy doesn't have a problem with being loose, Brad. No, I don't think so. <laughs> His smile lights up the arena as we check in now with Lewis Darby of Long Beach State. He told us he had a 40, a 42 inch vertical. We'll find out. I tell you what, when they were warming up a little while ago, I didn't get to see him dunk last night because a lot of these guys kept it pretty close to the vest last night. He can really fly. 42 inch vertical in his senior year in high school, his mom, Darlene Pontenac, called then coach Steve Lavin at UCLA, said you need to look at my guy. Coach nice. Lavin, you didn't return the phone call. <laughs> no, we did. We oh. called him back. We gave him some advice, gave him a little direction, and ended up in Long Beach State. He's a communications broadcasting major. Lab your guy's job. Lav barely calls anybody back. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Here's his first attempt. Goes up, gets it, and the reverse slam. That's the first attempt for Lewis Darby. As he looks up and awaits his score. So our first four dunkers have done so, 42 and a half, right about his vertical jump. But so far, the little guy is in front, but we've got four dunkers yet to go, including the favorite, Air Georgia, Brent Betway. We'll see what he's got for us when we come back. Big night for the NBA coming up on Friday on ESPN. It all starts at 8 Eastern as the Indiana Pacers take on the Orlando Magic. Then at 10.30 Eastern time, it's the Houston Rockets taking on Kobe Bryant and the Los Angeles Lakers. A big doubleheader. Our coverage begins with a Kia NBA shoot-around at 7.30 Eastern. Also available in high definition on ESPN HD. The place to be in college basketball all this weekend, Atlanta, Georgia. We're at Georgia State's arena, home of the Panthers. 
Mike Bray, the head coach at Notre Dame, looking on as he's had two contestants tonight. Colin Falls in the three-point contest, and now Russell Carter, his 6'4 senior out of Fallsboro, New Jersey, first team all Big East, fourth in scoring in the Big East at 17 a game. He was a good three-point shooter, too. I said, you know, thought you'd be shooting threes, not doing dunks. Here he goes, first attempt, and a good one. Boy, it, it takes a lot to get this crowd to appreciate what some of these guys are doing. There's so much entertainment between dunks and during the breaks that they're just burned out, they're exhausted. <laughs> <Tough> Sensory <crowd>. overload. <laughs> Russell Carter, as we look at his dunk again. From Notre Dame and uh, said yesterday that he's not taking the phone calls from Digger Phelps, who's offering free advice right now. Mike just laughed. Coach Bray has a special relationship with Russell Carter, but he admits that he's the most stubborn player he's ever coached. Thrown out of practices ten times, four times this year, but a great competitor. He says it in an affectionate, loving way. Tough love. A guy that maybe a lot of you haven't seen, David Patton, the MVP of the Big Sky Conference at Weber State. Weber State did not even make the Big Sky Tournament his junior year. Then they won it his senior year, lost to UCLA, and the best dunker in the Big Sky. Well, that's a pretty good reverse baseline dunk. <laughs> He's wondering. He's wondering. And now Petway starting to talk a little bit. <laughs> told us yesterday, David did, that his nickname is Affable D. Yeah. Being from Arkansas, I don't know what affable means. He says it means easy to approach easy and easy to, approach. to talk to. That's right. what Petway's doing. He's talking to him. Well, well, I, I like the beard, a little Jeremiah Johnson, the mountain man look. <laughs> Weaver. I even like the little spike he's got in the front of the hair. I don't remember that last night at practice. but It's a special lift there, a little yeah. pyramid he's yeah. got going there. Aerodynamic, something like that. <laughs> Waiting on David score at a 51. Puts him right now in second place. Now it's time for a local product out of Douglas County High School in Douglasville. And out of Georgia Tech, Mario West. One of the key ingredients, a guy that went from walk-on to captain. Not bad, huh? And the last member that played on Georgia Tech's Final Four team. And now Chuck Smith is a master of ceremonies, former all-pro with the Atlanta Falcons and the Carolina Panthers is holding everybody up because he wants to give Mario a little special introduction. Here he goes. Whoa! Big windmill. Not too bad. Patton liked it. Crowd liked it pretty well. You know, I love what he told us yesterday. He said that the further I get from that Final Four appearance, the more I appreciate it. A young man that has life in perspective already with a degree and working on his second degree. And Explosive business management and economics. The scholar takes off from distance here. Look at the wind up, the velocity. The Vita Blue Tom Seaver fastball <laughs> through the rim. <laughs> See if it puts him in the top two or three. The dance isn't bad either. Waiting on the score. Mario gets a 50, 10 times his number. So that puts him right now in third place. And now it comes to Brent Petway. He's got the shades on. You see the hairdo in the back out of McDonough, Georgia. You got a they call him Alma Air Georgia. Toro, the Michigan student. She's the one who exhibited her creative artistic abilities on he, Brent Petway's head of hair. And he did the Michigan helmet on the right, as you can see. And now with the state of Georgia and his number and his parents and family looking on, let's see how Brent Petway does. I would like this guy if he just had some confidence. Yeah, no I don't kidding. think he's confident enough to win this competition. Well, he's a little shy, a little introverted, <laughs> very inhibited. Up off the glass, a little too strong. He's got the shades on. He might have lost, lost his perspective the there a little bit. Yeah, now he's going to go do something else. Go get it. And we're at home. And now the dance to follow. And Mom just isn't even smiling. But you got to admit, the guy can dance. Oh, man. He told us yesterday, Mom is, that's, that's my boy. That's my boy. <laughs> Played at Griffin High School for Ferris Qualls, who just retired. And his high school coach is probably here, too, looking at him going, yeah, yeah, he didn't have any confidence in high school either. Well, you get the sense that tonight he's just coming out of his shell. Yeah. But he really doesn't have this personality. It's just tonight. It just hey, showed up. This is a guy that was awarded the Big Ten Sportsmanship Award this year. That's not being a good sport. 
<laughs> Let's see what the judges thought of it. Whoa, almost a perfect 59 and a half. Well, he was the favorite, and he still is. So after the first round of dunks, the guy that Lav took to win it, and the local favorite, or at least one of them, right now is in first place at 59 and a half. Jimmy's man, though. Royce Perrin right there at 54. And David Patton of Weber State, Mario West of Georgia Tech, Hill, Darby, Carter, and Pompey round it out. One down, one to go. Second dunk round is coming up when we come back. Well, earlier tonight, the pregame, Royce Perrin and Brett Petway had a little thing going on, a little half of a temptation deal. And now they're number one and number two after one round of the dunks. So they were breaking it down, and now they're breaking it up at 59 and a half and 54. Those are the top two guys. And then it's Patton, West Hill, Darby, Carter, and Pompey. So we'll start with Pompey, who had the low score of 35 for Marlin in the first round. They average out your first two dunks, and the top four will advance. He's going to go set up shop somewhere down on the baseline. Uh-huh. That's not an easy spot to come in from. Remember J.R. Ryder doing this one year from the baseline and somehow found a way to fly onto the court over the rim. And that's just what he tried to do. And he's only got eight seconds left. I don't even know if he can get on a shot away. Going to have to hurry. And he missed them both, and that'll put him out of the competition. So good try, a difficult angle from the baseline, and Marlon Pompey is gone. Now Adrian Hill, who had a pretty good score of 48 in the first round, is next up. Got to know your limits, Brad. Got to know your limits. <laughs> Adrian Hill, a guy that really was a rebounding machine, his career high, a school record against Seton Hall. He had 19 boards. And now he's getting ready to take the basketball to the board. I like the record-setting wristbands all over the body. Oh, he's got them. Count of 13, I think. Yeah, something like that. You never know where sweat could break out. <laughs> this guy had 19 rebounds this year against Seton Hall. Rebound waiting to happen. Over the Vegas.com board. And he missed it, but he's got another opportunity. Whoops. That's our sponsor. you got to watch out. All right. Well, he's getting it out of the way. He might not be going to Vegas anytime soon, but he's going to try a whole different dunk. And got it. And did it in the allotted time. Good timing off the bounce, the pass to himself off the floor. Again, when you miss your first one like he did, the, the, the judges, I think they have a hard time overcoming it no matter how good your second one is. Yep. Yeah, this, this is a pretty average dunk, but because he missed the first one, I think it really hurts his score. I think he'll be down in the 30-something range, not even. 29. And that put him in seventh place. Royce Perrin, smallest guy in the competition. Second place after the first dunk. Another guy that lacks any kind of charisma or confidence. <laughs> and here's his first dunk earlier. And that got the crowd excited. A 5'8 rim rocker is Royce Perrin from Chicago State. Still grew up on the south side of Chicago, a White Sox fan. Allen Iverson, another one of his heroes. Said when he was a sophomore in high school that his first dunk, because I was only 5'4". Whoa! Whoa! Much the same as the first one in style, but I think more impressive in lift. This is going to be a <laughs> runaway. Well, that's my guy because I, I think he can ignite this crowd and excite this crowd right there step for step with Petwood. Well, he, he said he came in to the tournament, the dunk contest. We take a look again at the airborne. He had to get his head out of the way to not hit the rim. 5'8", think about it. Rim level with his eyes at 5'8". Takes the jump meter off the chart. Let's take a look at his eyes. Whoa, oh, 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 that's a great angle. He got a perfect 60. There it is. First perfect score of the night. Hey, Coach Mike, nice play to DVD. To celebrate. <laughs> he, got got he does. Lewis Darby had 42 and a half on his first dunk. 
said his first dunk was in seventh grade, but he was about 5'8 at the time. Only now average. He's got some props out there. He only averaged five points a game, and I'm not too sure those kids know that standing right there. A guy getting ready to jump well, over you that only averaged five a game. Look out. One's D. Davis. She didn't have to duck. D. Davis of Vandy says, barely got my <laughs> ponytail. <laughs> she wants to see it again because she only felt just a little bit on the colic there in the back. Vanderbilt's all-time career assist leader gives another assist even in the dunk contest. Oh, that was pretty impressive. Dee's saying, oh, please don't hit me in the neck. Nothing happened. Well, nice thing, too. Intersport has enough insurance taken out for the event. <laughs> There's no concern there about getting a sneaker into the back of your head. Intersport, of course, the folks that put this on every year in conjunction with all of us at ESPN and Charlie and the gang doing an awesome job. And uh, again tonight, a pack the house here at Georgia State Arena. What do you got? 56 and a half. Not too bad. Had his first one been better, Lewis would be in the hunt. Now it's Russell Carter's turn. Russell had a 39 and barely got a smile from his coach on his first dunk. So something's going to have to be more creative for Russell to advance. First team all Big East, also made the Big East all tournament team. Again, shoots it well enough to be in the three-point shooting contest tonight. And goes up and gets it off the glass with one hand. That was much better than his first dunk. And that time, at least, Coach says, that's better. You can read Mike's lips. That's better. It's not easy, lad, to throw that ball off that backboard. you got to throw it right at that upper left uh, square area to have that thing come off at the right angle. The, the, the pass is as difficult as anything on that. Well, the single-handed catch. And it's a self-made player. Someone who just continued to improve throughout his career. And that stubbornness, when channeled in the right way, becomes a will to improve, a will to win, and Notre Dame as a result with a great season. 46 and a half for Russell Carter, now Pat New at 51. Set the Weber State single season dunk record. I don't know if there was a lot of competition for that or not. Not sure. David Patton with a lot of stops. Initially was at Pepperdine playing for Paul Westfall, and then went to junior college. We see him come up short here. Just on the baseline, almost took our cameraman out. Running out of time now, throws it up to try to go get the same dunk and missed it twice. He's still got time left, and he's just going to hammer one home. He wanted to get something down before the allotted 30 seconds wore out, and that probably won't be good enough for David Patton. Saw him there with that little volleyball dig. He actually played volleyball and basketball at Pepperdine before transferring to Weber State. Played for three coaches during his career. Westfall, Joe Cravens, and Randy Ray this past year's Weaver State makes it back to the NCAA tournament. Broadcast news major, and I think the news is he's not going to make it to the championship round, if I have my guess right. Mario West, who had a 50 in the first round. And 25 for Patton. That won't be good enough. Mario West, his coach, Paul Hewitt, just walked in over in the corner over here to watch. Coach Hewitt, who made him a captain at the end of the season. Brent Petway still dancing in the background, wait for his turn. Here comes Mario West to Georgia Tech. And way up there with a reverse slam. Great elevation. <laughs> He's really explosive as an athlete, has a, a football body. At 6'5". You know, the post-dunk celebration has become as important as the dunk itself, whether it's the dance, the stare down. And he is explosive. The jump meter right here is going to show you just from takeoff to the top of the jump, 41 inches. Again, 6'5", rim level with the eyes, hammers it home. Talk about precision and technology, oh. state of the art, the jump meter. Georgia Tech's best defender. They could have used more of him this year. 52 and a half, so he betters his first dunk. And it all comes down to Brent Petway, another Georgia guy from Griffin High School. His first dunk, 59 and a half, which put him in first place, and this was it. 
As you can see, he had to get his head out of the way so he didn't hit either the backboard or the rim. The player's looking for any competitive edge, and these Dolce and Gabbana, Gabbana shades could put Brett Petway over the top. <laughs> he's he's going so, to keep him on for this one. He's so confident. He told us yesterday, if basketball doesn't work out, he wants to play NFL football. How many 6'8", 200-pound guys play NFL football? That have never played before. Whoops. Oh, my gosh. He's going to pass He threw that one over, he threw that one over <laughs> the shot clock. <laughs> he won't be a quarterback. That's right. Oh, my gosh. Goodness. Oh, that would have been big, but he missed it. Now he needs a basketball in a hurry. We're going to have an upset in the making if Petway doesn't come up with something in 10 seconds. Takes a different angle, running out of time, and he missed. The favorite is out. The favorite may be out right here. Well, he goes and he hammered one home just to get something in the bank. But his mom, oh boy, oh boy. Sunday dinner, he's going to get a very small plate. Oh, the way she looks. No shades at the dinner table. No, no shades. And get the earrings out of here, too. And, and that wind sound that you hear may be the air going out of Air Georgia. Oh, man, the favorite. They have just taken it on the chin, Brad. And Royce Barrett is going, oh, that's so bad. Oh, boy, that's too bad. Darn. That's good. Of, that's too bad. But his dunk is going to count. The last one he did, Joe Horn is saying, I told you not to do that. 34. So he will advance because he's in fourth place. And now all the judges. <clears throat> Mom's the ultimate judge, though. That tells the story. She may not know yet that her baby boy is going to make it to the finals. But now it's Perrin, West, Darby, and Petway. One guy from Georgia Tech, one Georgia native, one underdog, the smallest guy in the field. And the semifinals of the Vegas.com slam dunk are next. It's going to heat up some more. Stick around. It's the NCAA Women's Championship presented on ESPN by Orbitz. At 7 Eastern, number four seeded Rutgers faces number three seed LSU. Then at 9 o'clock Eastern, number one seed North Carolina takes on the number one seeded Lady Balls of Tennessee. Coverage begins at 6.30 Eastern with the NCAA Women's Championship Special. King Center just down the street from where we are here at Georgia State's Arena in Atlanta and the Vegas.com Slam Dunk Championship semifinals. Here they are. Royce Perrins and the guy that had the best two rounds. Mari West of Georgia Tech, Lewis Darby Long Beach State, and Brent Petway, one of the favorites, who just barely got a dunk in just to get to the finals. And his mom had that look on her face there and like, what is he doing out there? She, she certainly did, and she actually taught him everything about dunking. So Give me a critique here. What happened to those two dunks? I think he was actually trying to throw it off the shot clock. And on that toss, the initial toss, it missed the shot clock. <laughs> but he still tried to throw it down. The second shot was just terrible. So I think he's just a little too hyped and too excited. He needs to settle down because he's got this. He's got this. But he's got to settle down and do what he does best. Are you going to settle down? <laughs> you, it's going to be over shortly, Mom. <laughs> so now that way is in fourth place. He was in first place after the first round. And now he's got the shades off. I think he got the evil eye from Mom who said, settle down and go win this thing in your home state. Here's Brett Petway of Michigan. He's going to go for the shot clock again. He got it. Oh, but he missed the dunk. He hit the shot clock. He just didn't quit quite handle. And Mom's getting nervous. Time he got it. And he throws the ball in the crowd. That's a $500 fine, but <laughs> mom and dad will pay it. He's going to go retrieve the ball. No, he's not. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's a lot more difficult to hit that shot clock than it looks. I know it's about a two and a half by two and a half foot square up there on top of that rim. It's not easy to hit that thing to have it come off at the right angle right in front of the rim. So again, the pass is critical on this type of a this type of a play for Petwood. Got a 40 on our jump meter. Will it be enough though? It's up to the judges, not up to us. Well the concern now too is when you hit the shot clock with as much force as his passes have hit them is we've got to get the electrical engineers out here on the clock because now we could have an issue on the dunks that subsequently follow. He's in first place right now but there's a long ways to go. 
I bet he tested Tommy Emmerker a few times in his career. I'm just going out on a limb and saying that. Yeah, a good move to take off the sunglasses <laughs> as well. Given they were prescription Dolce & Gabbana, I think the three-dimensional aspect was throwing things a little bit out of kilter for Mr. Petway. Tom, Tommy Emmerker and his wife are here tonight. We talked to them before the ball game. Here comes Lewis Darby. Got a degree in communications that he'll be picking up in May. Nice dunk. I mean, this crowd is hard to please. That way he's getting nervous. Brent Petway looking on as Lewis Darby with great elevation on both his earlier dunks. Throws it up, runs it, gets it, and a reverse slam. Well, he gets up now from yep. six four and a half, has a measured 42-inch vertical, and going to set it even higher, maybe. Look at the jump meter again, Whoa. 44 oh, inches. Oh, man. The precision of the jump meter is just remarkable. <laughs> <laughs> You're saying it's it's not as close as I, it, how you I know. Was how missing, you? I was missing. I was missing. When I coached, we should have had a jump meter. Oh, I would have made all the difference in the world. Well, that clipboard. That didn't impress the, the uh, judges that much. 42, so that means Petway's still in the hunt. Mario West of Georgia Tech. He's probably been the most consistent guy. At 50 in his first dunk, 52 and a half on his second and his head coach Paul Hewitt who called him the guts of his team and an inspiration to us defensively all year long looks on and wait to see if Mario his captain can go get another one testing out where that ball is going to land but that does take 10 seconds he needs something big here I think oh, oh that would have been it that would have been it you're right he went on a spin after the throw see if he can go get one more got it and hit himself in the head on the way through coach says that wasn't bad <laughs> he said that was nice now now brad i think that the second miss that he had i think that one's going to help him because that was as good a miss as we've seen all evening i think that might have won the whole thing if he'd have hit that second one you're right because he had the spin in between and the 360, but this is the one that he goes and gets after he missed the first one. And his coach looks on, Paul Hewitt. And he liked it. And Josh Smith says, not bad. Hometown guy. And now Mario can only look and wait for what the judges have said. 47. That means that Brent Petway with a 47 and a half will advance. So he's still alive. And that's advancing regardless of what happens right here from Royce Perrin. Only two advance. And now Perrin, if he's anything like he was in his first two dunks, will be the next guy to go on. 54 with his first, a perfect 60. For little Royce Perrin on his second one, and now he's telling our camera guys to move. He's telling his teammates to move. Great poise and no rush here. Over 10 seconds, 12 seconds off the clock. The bounce missed the reverse. And now he's got 15 seconds left to pull up his trunks and do it again from a different angle. The bounce. Oh, and he missed. He's in trouble. He's in trouble. He's in big go. trouble. May not be able to get one more off. He's going to take his time, though. And he oh, got it. Oh. Well. That one was halfway in and halfway out and went back through. Now the judges are going to have to determine whether or not the little guy is going to advance. And Spud Webb says, hey. Boy, the remarkable quickness, cat quickness, the hand-eye coordination. Maybe the level of difficulty will push him into that top two. I think that's what he's banking on. But if he doesn't advance, it's going to be a battle of two guys, one from Douglas County High School and one from Griffin High School. It will be the Georgia connection if Perrin doesn't advance. And he will not get there. It comes down to Mario West and Brent Petway. The two local favorites have made it to the finals. And let's check in with Aaron. All right, we got a guy from Georgia Tech and a guy who lives here in Georgia. Are we gonna try to start talking some smack, guys? What do you have to say? Oh man, this is all the fun. Very competitive. I'm so proud of him and what kind of player he's become. This I mean, is boring. I know you're a no, showboat. No. Come on. You know we. You know it's a, it's a good little competition. You know Georgia Tech, Georgia. You know it's, it's going down. I got a state of Georgia in the back of my head, though. I think that's gonna give me a little boost. Wet our palate a little bit. Give us a little preview here. 
Well, you just got to stay tuned. It's going to be a lot of energy. We're going to put on the show for the home crowd. This is my city, though, so I, I got to show them a little something. Your mama's going to give you a dirty look if you don't do a good job here. Give us a, a taste of what's coming up for you. Well, I got a little Dominique special mixed with a little Vince Carter with a little of my own twist. So I'm make sure my mom be happy when we leave. All right, guys. Send it over to you. Air Georgia, but Mario West says, but this is my city. And those two go to the finals. There have been some great moments in history of this contest. And as we go to break, ask yourself, what's in store this year between Mario West and Brent Petway? And we've seen it all over the years, haven't we? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Over. Good night. Good night. Guys, That's going to be a 50. That's going to be a 50. Are you serious? It's over. It's over. Hello. Big night for the NBA coming up on Friday on ESPN. It all starts at 8 Eastern as the Indiana Pacers take on the Orlando Magic. Then at 10.30 Eastern time, it's the Houston Rockets taking on Kobe Bryant and the Los Angeles Lakers. A big doubleheader. Our coverage begins with a Kia NBA shoot-around at 7.30 Eastern. Also available in high definition on ESPN HD. From the skyline of Atlanta to the Vegas.com slam dunk championship final here at Georgia State Arena in Atlanta. It's all come down to two guys, both with Georgia ties. First, Mario West of Georgia Tech was one of the underdogs really coming into this. But that windmill sweeper and then the reverse with two hands got him to the finals against Brent Petway, who has been dubbed Air Georgia by his teammates at Michigan. That was his first attempt. Then up off the shot clock and down through. That's what got him to the finals. So while he's signing autographs and dancing during the timeout, Mario West has been tightening his trunks, staring at the basket. And I personally think, fellas, that if he'd have hit, if he hits or tries to hit the dunk that he had, the second attempt that he missed on, I think he could win the thing. Well, Mario West is clearly demonstrating more focus than Brent Petway. So if that's any indication who's going to win, it's Mario West. Oh, he went between the legs and lost the ball. The official's going to help him tip it back. He's still got 20 seconds. And between oh, the legs and in. really nice. That right is there. nice. Well, the fourth. Oh, wow. Coach Hewitt says, I didn't let him do that in practice. I just pulled a Hulk Hogan. That puts a lot of pressure on Brent Petway. Wow. Oh, that was strong. That was Yellow Jacket strong. That was a stinger right there. How about the arm wrestle with the rim? I mean, you got to be in the air a long time to pull this off. Back when I was single, I was on dates that didn't last that long. Look how long that guy's in the air his to Georgia, do that. His Georgia Tech teammates are out on the floor. He said Ishmael Woo! Muhammad was the guy that helped him the most with his dunks. And here's his guys looking on. They want to take it back over to Georgia Tech. Look at the Venice Beach flex, the Muscle Beach. <laughs> it's going to be hard to beat, guy. That's going to be hard to beat. A 60. And it looks like unless Brett Petway comes up with something astonishing, the slam dunk championship is going over to the flats, and it's only got to travel about eight blocks. It might take two days to get it there with the traffic. But now it's down to Brent Petway, and Mom can't even bear to look. <laughs> If he has a perfect score, we'll have a dunk off. Otherwise, Mario West, the pride and joy of Douglas County High School, will win it in his city. As he told Brent Petway, it's my city. Here comes Air Georgia. That would have been a dunk off. Oh, boy. If he would have finished that one. Just building the suspense. Just couldn't <laughs> quite find the handle. Will he do the same thing? Yes, he did. See, he's, it's all about the suspense. The pass is too close to the rim. He's got to back that pass out a little bit and give himself some room. Now he goes up and slams it home off the glass. I don't think it's going to do it, guys. Not enough. And now he is frustrated a little bit. 
Mario West will come over to be the first to shake his hand, I think. Josh Smith's giving him some pointers over there. The great thing with Brent Petway, with the personality and the skills he's displayed today, as a backup career, he could always be the DJ or VJ <laughs> in a spring break somewhere in Cancun or Miami, somewhere. <laughs> oh, man. What he lacked in skill, he certainly made up for with confidence and enthusiasm all evening long but the, the the first two passes brad just did him in way too close to the rim because look where the ball is by the time he gets it he's under the rim and can't recover and from that point on it's just do whatever i can and mario west with that determination and focus sends brett pretway and air georgia grounded somebody that i recall picked mario west to win the slam dunk that championship that would have been you Yes, that's right. I said he slept in his own bed last night. I talked did. to him about three hours ago. I said, did you get some rest? Yes, sir. He's with Aaron Andrews. Mario West, first of all, this is yours. It's too heavy for me. The first time they've given out a, a belt here. What do you think? Oh, it's awesome. It's so cool. Just so blessed to be here today. I mean, my, look at the competition. The competition was great. You know, I just lucked out. He didn't finish that last dunk. But I'm glad to represent from Georgia Tech and the home crowd here. That was great. What were you thinking? He's, it looked like he was kind of stalling here. Uh, you know, it's just trying to just think about the dunk that he's going to do. and just trying to finish it, you know. You said you had about 10 to 15 suggestions on what you should do. How did you come down to your final decision? Well, I, I can't take the credit for this right here. I got to thank my teammate, Ishmael Muhammad. He did a wonderful job of uh, just helping me out. He gave me a lot of tips. My whole, All my teammates are here, my coaches, you know, my family. I got to thank everybody. You know? let's, let's put it on. Come on. Put it on. Brad? Isn't it amazing that a guy that walked on at Georgia Tech and by the time he's in grad school becomes a senior captain, their defensive stalwart, one of the lowest scoring guys on the Georgia Tech team. He scores big tonight with a hometown crowd and he wins it going away. Mario West, the college dunk champion of the world. We're not quite done. We'll have some final thoughts when we come back to Atlanta in a moment. Back in Atlanta, Things clearing out here, but still the participants having a great time. Lav, your final thoughts tonight. Well, you know, Brent Petway doesn't go home with any hardware, but clearly a star is born, whether it's as a game show host or <laughs> hosting a spring break in Miami or potentially a reality TV show. He brings it all to the table. Your favorite spot, yeah. Jimmy. Katie Gerald's hitting the money ball as the shot clock winds down to win the three-point competition. Big time play by Katie Gerald. Mario West of Georgia Tech wins the dunk as West goes north. Aaron Brooks won the men's three-point. It was Katie Gerald's for the women and the overall title as well. And then Mario West of Georgia Tech lit up the crowd and won. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Steve Lavin, Jimmy Dykes, and Aaron Andrews, Brad Nessler, good night from Atlanta.